tells the life of comedian Richard Stott. Richard is, in his own words, lopsided. The birth defect Poland syndrome caused the underdevelopment of his left hand, arm and chest. And it's his tale from surgery to an epiphany at Stonehenge that forms the basis of the show. Uh, so, Richard, it's called Wretched, but that sounds like the start of your tale. The end sounds a little more hopeful. Is that correct? Um, yeah, it is a, it is a, a show of hope, I guess. Um, the end of the show doesn't actually answer any questions because with it being a very autobiographical show, um, the end isn't, isn't there. I'm still on the journey. So um, it was a wonderful thing for me to put into place last year and I'm really happy to be bringing it to the Camden Fringe. And would you say you were in a, in a, in a better position than when you started? Because Wretched, as a title, mm-hmm. suggests a, a place of... A very well, bad place yes, to certainly. Um, the show does... Um, it, it talks not just on my condition, which is called Poland Syndrome, but it also looks at themes of uh, depression and difficulties in the industry I've decided to go into and feeling wretched, with the definition of which is the thing of poor quality, to turning into something else. Um, those, those issues, the depression, the hard work of being in that industry, are not exclusive to disabled people. Absolutely not, it, no. it sounds like it could be made even worse, though, by having a disability. Did you find there were extra challenges trying to make your way through? Certainly. Um, I think when you go into the acting industry, and um, basically, if you, if one of the first things they do in a lot of castings is they get you to hold up your hands before even, you even say your name. Now, when you're splitting hairs as it's so competitive and you give them a potentially quite a big problem. Um, you, you, you can rule yourself out mentally of a lot of things before you even get started on them. Um, obviously, you know, you, you combine theatre and stand-up in this. Did you have to sort of tread a fine line when looking at the humour? Because presumably there'll be those in the audience might be a little nervous about what they're laughing at. They want to be seen to be laughing at disability. Did you have to sort of feel you had to bring them along on a, on a journey together? I mean, I didn't actually think about that very much. I... It's very autobiographical, and I, I kind of pull no punches as I assess and tackle the issues head-on with humour. Now, obviously, I'm really pleased for people to be laughing. Um, I think I've written in such a way that people are laughing for the right reasons, but if they feel uncomfortable, good. <laughs> That's how I, 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 I'd like to be, people to feel slightly uncomfortable while they're watching this sometimes, yeah. yes. Well, I, I imagine that's, you know, you know that... that brings part of the sort of journey to, to the people themselves as well. Um, when when you were doing it, did you find it a cathartic process? Did you feel sort of better having gone, you know, created mm, this show? Mm, hugely. It actually made me do a lot more research into my condition than I actually had before. So I really knew what I was talking about. And it was a cathartic process to go back into my life and pick out those moments and where I found... Um, the strength to get through the, the, the harder parts of life. And I hadn't really mentally thought about that before, so bringing it to the stage really taught me a lot about myself as well. My final question for you, uh, there's not been many high-profile people who've had it that we know. <laughs> Jeremy Beadle was one of he them. He is one of them. Do you hope he was sort of one of those people who's actually talking about it? Because in the past it seems that people um, were trying to sort of hide it, because yeah. it's not always so noticeable instantly. I mean, my, my opening for a lot of stand-up gigs is, you know, two, thing, two things happened simultaneously in January 2008. Jeremy Beadle died, and I became the funniest person in the country with one small hand. Um, and, yeah, it, 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 it was definitely not something he talked about, but it's definitely something I think I can... Um, I found a lot of humour in. People find it interesting. I'm very happy to talk about it. Uh, Richard Stott, being a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very pleasure. much indeed. You can see Richard so Richard uh, at the uh, Hen and Chickens Theatre in Islington. It's part of the Camden Fringe on the 21st and 22nd of August. Now, in 2016, the chicken connoisseur.